America's Got Talent's first live show, what you didn't see on TV. And you, my friends, are my golden buzzer. You are going straight to the live show. Last night marked the first night of live competition for AGT. The first with Tyra Banks as host. Tyra hit the stage as if it was a fashion runway, and she was just as fly backstage when I talked to her about her live AGT debut. But there was one mistake she was afraid of making. Your first live show as host of AGT, how you feeling? I am feeling really good. No, no mess ups. During rehearsals, I twice said, America's next got talent. And I was like, <laughs> So I did not say that live, thank God. Because you're juggling so many shows. Too many shows with America in it. Huh. <laughs> I mean, does Tyra Big still get nervous? Because you didn't show it. Yeah, I don't get nervous when I'm myself. Okay. So I am myself, but if this was me acting on a stage and it was Broadway, I'd be a hot mess. Right. Lines to remember, all that. But anytime I'm myself, I'm like, I'm chilling. I'm myself with of you right you now. Are. Chilling, I, I right? feel you, I feel you. You see us? You see that chemistry, me and Ty Ty? Well, points to her for not flubbing. She told me she also went into heightened mama bear mode with some of the nervous young contestants backstage. And yet, despite the nerves, two of those pint-sized acts really stole the show. Ten-year-old Angelica Hale dazzled the judges with a stunning cover of Zed's Clarity. Mel B even got a bit emotional. The way that you interpreted every single lyric meant something so powerful. Thank you so much, Neil. I'm not going to cry. It's like a roller coaster ride, this yeah. show, and it's live. And I'm the kind of person, whatever I feel just comes out. Did you realize that she was going to be so connected and get so emotional no, watching No, I never knew, but I was so happy when I found out. Right? It's kind of nice to make an adult cry, right? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people sometimes. Another standout performer, 12-year-old Darcy Lynn, the singing ventriloquist. Her newest puppet, a mouse named Oscar, who had a bit of a crush. I fall in love with Melby. She's a human and you're a mouse. Well, I didn't think that would be an issue. I mean, Heidi was married to a seal. To win Mel over Oscar, sang Mel a Jackson 5 classic. Do you think you got a shot with Mel B? Uh -huh. I poured my heart out to her and I think she liked it. If you do get the chance to take Mel on a date, what are you doing? Where are you going? Well, I was thinking, you know, somewhere romantic in Hawaii. Oh, trying to take, yeah. get her on a beach, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's right. I talk to puppets now. My job is weird and I love it. All right, let's keep the good vibes going with some super exciting movie news. After coyly dodging questions about whether he'd return as James Bond, Daniel Craig finally put us out of our misery while visiting The Late Show with Stephen Colbert last night. Daniel Craig, we, we could use some good news here. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Craig, will you return as James Bond? Yes. Thanks so much. Daniel Craig, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank that you. is fantastic. That is fantastic. Uh, I, couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah! We are excited for that too. All right, Craig, who is the sixth actor to play 007, will suit up as the secret agent in his fifth consecutive film in the blockbuster franchise. But he also told Colbert this will be his last. But you know what? We will take it. All right, meanwhile, I thought it would be nice to share this update on the families of the victims of the Manchester attack. You guys may recall a bomb went off at Ariana Grande's concert in May and left 22 people dead. Well, now we're learning that the families of those victims will receive $324,000 each from the We Love Manchester Emergency Fund. That fund was set up following the attack and raised over $23 million, largely in part to Ari's benefit show that took place in June in the city. I just thought we could all hear some good news out of that tragedy.
Now, speaking of keeping things positive, Demi Lovato, who is the fittest and fiercest she's ever been, has teamed up with Kate Hudson and Fabletics for her own line of athletic wear. And she's opening up to our Katie Krause about her journey to self-acceptance. You seem the happiest that you've ever been, both physically and mentally. What do you think that you've learned about yourself the most in the last year? Well, I take care of my mental health. It's definitely something that I prioritize as well as my physical health. Um, I see a therapist two days a week. I reach out to people that um, whenever I'm struggling with something, I work out, I eat clean, I have a healthy support system around me. I do everything that it takes to maintain a happy, healthy lifestyle. You've been so open and candid about your struggles and about body shamers. Is that something that you're still dealing with? I don't really deal with body shamers anymore because I don't look at it. And I think the more attention that you give it, the more power it has over you. I focus on just what I see in the mirror and that's a beautiful person. And regardless of what I think of my body that day, I know that nobody can take who I am away from me. And if I see a comment that says that she's fat or whatever, um, it I let it roll off my back because I just know that I'm healthy and I'm doing everything that I can to be healthy. Whatever my body is right now is what it is. So love it or hate it, I'm still gonna love it. If there's anything to take away from Demi, and you know what, this show for that matter, it's to be kind to one another and definitely be kind to yourself. I leave you with that, all my friends, and we'll have more entertainment nuggets for you tomorrow, so you know the deal. Hit subscribe, like, comment, and share, and then dance. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.